What's up, lover girls, lover boys? It's your girl, Amari Noel, and I'm here with my ace bone cone. Oh, you can do it too. Snap your fingers in the air, shake your mic, girls, too. It's your girl, Cat Daddy. Yeah, I go to work. Chip, when a, uh, when a, uh, Jean Skinny, like, screw it. Hold on, looking for your girl, just missed the Cat Daddy, and she took it. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> That was fire. But you're tuned into our new podcast, my new podcast, Love Is My Religion, which is centered after my new project I just dropped, Love Is My Religion. You feel me? How you feel about the album? Hey, that album was spicy, pricey, oh, wow. neck and wrist icy. And if you ain't heard it yet, go get that. Go get that. Because it's on what? All, All platforms. platforms. It's on what? All platforms. It's on what? It with me. All oh, platforms. Yes, yes, sir. Make sure you go play that, run that up, go buy that. Support the artists. You know, artists as artists, we need support, man. And one form of support is going to listen and buying it. But anyway, most importantly, make sure you tune into this podcast because it's going to be a whole bunch of heartfelt, heartfelt conversations. You feel me? But without further ado, let's get into the episode. So I decided to call the episode Live by the Heart. Die by the heart. Live by the heart. Live by the heart. Die by the heart. Okay. And how you feel about that? You know, I think we embody that. Mm. You know? And what would you say? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, like the orange stuff, stuff we give off. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's, that's just us. And, and that's crazy you say people know by the look, because, like, okay, y'all, I ain't never know Kat. Like, growing up, we met on the internet. And I used to stalk her because she was just, like, this cool person. And I feel like she was comfortable in her sexuality, like, in everything. And I was just like, dang, I want to be like her. Like, I had no shame in saying that. I mean, I never told nobody because they didn't know you. But I would be like, dang, every day, I swear to God. Like, on, it's, it was Instagram on the computer. That's how invested I was in it. I was in. It was Instagram on the computer. It wasn't even the phones. I used to come home every day, type Instagram.com slash K. Yeah, KS.22. And I used to see you. And I used to be like, dang, bro. Like, I wonder what type of person she is. And then we end up meeting each other because of basketball. Both of us grew up playing basketball. And. Yeah, yeah, it was, we had a little mishaps with our team or whatever, but re what really connected us was kind of our love for Spongebob covers. You want to talk about that? We had the same Spongebob <laughs> cover, y'all. Yeah. You know, on Instagram back in the day, you could just post anything. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't all about the looks. It, it was aesthetic. Like, like it, it was just our everyday life. life. Yeah. yeah. And I was thirsty because, like, growing up, Spongebob was my husband. You can't tell me nothing different. I feel like if anybody was saying that, like, I was one of them people that'd be like, no, he not. He not. But the whole time, man. <laughs> no, we just had the same cover. That was my man, my man, my man. <laughs> but uh, so I feel like this first song uh, on the project, which is called Love Is My Religion, named after the project, like, that's what the title of the episode kind of embody. Live by the heart, die by the heart. Like I was explaining, you know, like, just like my life and how it was centered around love. So let's play that so we get a feel for it. Tell me. Start talking about love. Love is my religion, my favorite kind of drug. Didn't get it out when I was younger. What it do? Got to mess me up, but it really made me stronger. Fighting these demons. Try to let the past be the best. Fresh as I feel, it didn't last. But I can't act like I ain't see that coming. What it do ever for you in return for nothing? Uh -huh. Probably why I'm loving all these bitches. Searching for some real attention. Searching for the one that I've been missing. Is she out there? Or she love me? I hope so. Oh, so it's kind of crazy to believe in a short time. I came up in a short time. I made up. What you do? 
I mean that I'ma go uh -huh. again For the ones who thought maybe I was done with How could I ever be? How could I ever quit? I'm something that's been freeing me Talking up, speaking more like a free me Time to show these motherfuckers they ain't seeing me Time to show my future wife and my legacy It's showing up in how hard gets the remedy Come on, cause for my dreams I die for And for your love I are you ready, babe? Woo! Clap for the heavyweight champ, me. But I couldn't do it all alone. We, yeah. yeah so, so okay, okay, okay. You want Emmy's quick? You want Emmy quick? Quick, quick. Come on, Emmy quick. Emmy quick. What was your feeling like, like making that song? Like, how, how did you feel? Like, um, because like everybody was kind of just talking about like. All you gonna do is talk about love, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, yeah, but like, I want to talk my shit. Like on the first, um, the first leg, it was like they tell me stop talking about love. Love is my religion, my favorite kind of drug. Like you tell me stop talking about it, but let me tell you why I want to talk about it. Cause it's my favorite religion. Like it's my kind of drug. Like y'all be on them drugs, but it's the type of drug I be on. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and I kind of like. The intro song to me always has to be like heavy. It don't always gotta be dark, but lately I've had a pattern of my um, intros being dark, you know, hence high on, on the last, last uh, project, project and this one. one. Uh, shout out to Diamond, Diamond made the producer, she produced that, but I just wanted something that you could feel, like that'll make you feel like have the emotions or just make you feel like captivated immediately. And I think that, you know, I did that, we did that. Uh, yes, because I tend to make just like a lot of like story songs, like a lot of songs that kind of have like a beginning and middle and an end. Although this one had one, it was kind of like me, like freestyle. Like I was in a little rapper bag, mm -hmm. like, like a, a little rapper bag. And I used to rap back in the day. So, you know, once in a while, she likes to come out and, you know, show her face. And uh, yeah, I told about my thoughts, my feelings, fake friends. Uh, future girl, future wifey, and I kind of told them like, um, time to show. I said time to show these motherfuckers they ain't seeing me. You know, like I kind of talk, talk my stuff. Like, like yeah, yeah, I'm here. Like, and, and this is what I'm coming, coming with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do you feel like you said I can't even lie? <laughs> I made up. Yeah. Um. So. But this year has been the craziest year of my life. Like January, February, I was not feeling 2022. Like I was mad like at the world, but I was going to therapy, so I was kind of healing like at the same time. And in 2022, in March, like right before March, I would say like middle of February, I had told my manager like, you know, maybe I need to take a break from music. It's not working out. Like nothing is moving. And we have been in it for two years. So I'm really just like, it's not working. And once I said that, I feel like God was like, finally, you released. And you stop trying to control stuff. And then it just started moving. Uh, Running to the team. Shout out to uh, NPR, my team and everything like that. And we kind of linked up. And they've been helping me, you know, just prolong my message. But um, so in a short time, I came up. Like, I feel like, like what we, we in right now? now? We, we in um, November, the end of November, about to be December. So uh, April, okay. April, May, June, July, wait, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. In a matter of eight months, like, my life has changed, like, tremendously. Like, um, put out two projects that, like, getting some nice streams. Like, I went from, like, I would say 500 streams to, like, I think Unusual is my highest streaming song. Like, on Apple Music got over 100K plays. So that's a beautiful thing. That's, that's a come up to me. me. And then... Just creating my online image, like people see me as a, in a new light. I changed my name to Amari Noel. If you didn't know, I used to go by Million Dollar Maddie. So that's a new persona and character in its own. And then uh, going on tour with Cash Page. Shout out to uh, Cash Page. Um, that shit just crazy. crazy. Like I don't, I don't know. know. In, in a short, short time, time, I came up because I made up my mind. I'ma go get it for the ones who thought maybe I was done with it because everybody just kept saying like. Like in my hometown that knew me, like you don't do music, music no more, you don't, don't do music, music no more. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let, let's tell the people what you was doing though. Okay. What, what, was, what was the backside? Let them know. Let 
uh, so outside of music, I kind of got like my own like media company, Neighborhood Productions, uh, and also the off uh, name on that MBHD is Neighborhood Hope Dealers. And in my city, I was just being what uh, what's his name. Cootie was being the Kanye, oh, yeah. like, like I, I was, was uh, doing music videos, but also recording people's vlogs and stuff as well, just being behind the camera, but still dealing with music. And I can honestly say like at first, and taking pictures, at first it was fun, but then it started getting, getting depressing. depressing. Cause, Cause I'm, I'm like, like, dang, y'all chasing y'all dreams. And I don't really like the camera, I'm gifted at it, but that's not what I want to do. And I'm just like, oh my God, like I was, con I know God was sick, sick of me, me. prepared to be sick of me because I just kept praying the same prayers. I'm like, God, please, I don't want to do, do this no more. more. Like, like, and I got to a point where I told everybody uh, on my neighborhood Maddie page, because I used to go by uh, Maddie. I told everybody like, y'all, I gotta, I wrote them a nice little outro little, uh, letter and said, hey y'all, like, I gotta do what's best for me. I gotta chase my dreams. Basically, I'm unhappy and this is not goodbye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cause Maddie will always be a part of me, but it's time to be who I really am, which is Amari Noel, which is my birth name. So that's what I was doing and that's where I'm at now. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you take this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you take that. Thank, Thank you, girl. girl. Most definitely, because I ain't gonna lie, like I had got to a point where my business was bringing in like 3,000 a month. I don't know how the hell it was doing that, but I, I would say it's cause I just made my brand like look good and that's all you gotta do y'all. It's about your brand. Make sure you just got the hottest shit and you serving it up, most important meal of the day, serving it up Gary's way. <laughs> nah, but um, most definitely, like I had to make a choice like and Lose the money, like, cause obviously business is not the same cause everybody don't even think I take pictures and stuff no more. So uh, I got one like consistent client that honestly was paying, be paying when I used to have my apartment, paying my bills every month, like paying my rent every month. And then I'll go scavenge for the um, other money. But I chose what I was passionate about, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and what was in my heart. And thank God it paid off. Cause <sighs> one thing about me, I always gotta have some money in my pocket. Like I can't just not have nothing. My mama always said that my grandma used to tell her, like, even if you got a dollar in your pocket, like you got some money. Like I have to have something. But at the same time, like money is not everything. And I think that's where I've grown to realize, like as long as I'm happy and I'm chasing my dreams and I have a roof over my head, shout out to my parents. Um, then the money gonna come. But right now we chasing greatness and greatness don't always start with money. Oh. <laughs> oh but can you like relate to that? Like, ha has it ever been something in your life where like you had to choose what was in your heart versus like choose what maybe looked good on the outside and felt good? Yeah. Some people don't know, but I was a teacher and a coach. Oh. And I got into coaching because I played basketball. Mm -hmm. If you know me, I tore both my ACLs. So that kind of ended a lot of dreams that I thought, you know, that I had, I once had. So just really like stepping into that role, being a, you know, advocate and a leader for the kids, mm -hmm. and able to do and still be around something that I love, that was, that was wonderful. That was a great feeling. And then sadly, I lost a close friend of mine who took my pictures at Butler and some people don't know, but I used to take pictures in high school, 2015, when I was 20. Class 2015. So, after I lost him, that's when I picked the camera back up, because it was like, that was something I once loved too, but I put it down to play basketball. So, just getting back into the, the rhythm of that, and just seeing how the business been been going, not even about money, just people just talking about my work, or just, you know, sharing it, and... Mm -hmm. Just supporting me, it's just been wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling, and opportunities have both, you know, opened up. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my dog. Hey, shout out to my dog. <laughs> <laughs> this so, girl, yeah. I'm. First of all, let's just give you your flowers. What uh, ignoring them like say so on this, this show? We like to get big flowers. flowers. So, so let me give you your flowers, cat y'all. Uh, I graduated from high. I said high school. Graduated from college in 2019. 
And, you know, post-graduation, uh, you be depressed. Because if you ain't got no job or you ain't did what you supposed to do, like in college to set yourself up after college, you going back to your mom's house or you going mm -hmm. to, to your boyfriend. boyfriend house, your girlfriend house, wherever you stand, you going back to the streets, homie. And that's what I had to do, go back home. And I remember crying on the Greyhound. I used to ride the Greyhound. I went to school in Mississippi. I love the Greyhound, by the way. I prefer it over a plane, but we could talk about that another day. <laughs> um, was going home and... I'm just crying because I'm just like, I don't want to go back home. Like, what's next for me? Because, like, you notice we go to school all our life. Mm -hmm. Like, all, all our life, life, we've been in school probably since, like, what, like five, six years old. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a system, routine, system, routine, system. And it's kind of like instant gratification because you get good grades, mm -hmm. you get rewarded. Uh, you do good on tryouts, you make the team. So I was used to, like, a system. And now it was just, like, now you got to uh, fame for your own self. Mm -hmm. Like, now you got to figure out where you belong in this world. And out of anything, I wanted music, but I didn't know how to get it. Um, but I did what I, I knew how. In school, you research things and you study. You go talk to people. So that's what I was doing. And I had a debate with my mom. Uh, she was just like, you need to go teach and get a salary job and blah, 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 like that. I'm like, wow, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm trying to chase my dreams. Like, I want to do music. And my mama do music. She been chasing her dreams, like, the whole time. And I'm just like, you did it. Like, that's what you do. Like, why can't I do it either? But she was just like, you ain't got no plan. And I got that. Because in her mind, in my mind, shit, it looked like I didn't know what I was doing either. But by the grace of God, I put out my first project. It was called Superstar Unknown Under My, my <laughs> Under my, my Other Name, Million Dollar Maddie. And that was my other um, rap name. I mean, my rap name. And I put out a project, and it did good. Like, in, it went platinum in the hood. That's what they say. Went platinum in the hood. But I was able to have a body of work, and then one day, Cat was like, send me some of your music. And... I don't, I don't never do that. that. Like, like, I, I never, never do that. that. Like, because I'm very, what Erica Badu say, keep in mind, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. So, I was just very sensitive about my work. But something told me, like, just show her, because I was working on new stuff. Like, I'm the type of person, I don't like doing what everybody be doing. So, at the time, everybody was rapping. So, I was trying to test out my singing voice. Like, I always knew I could sing, but, like, how do I be a singer? Mm -hmm. like, like, that, that shit, shit hard. hard. So, I sent you some shit sent you some songs not knowing that like you had a plan of your own like and talk talk about your plan talk about your plan before I keep you going, going. <laughs> she think i had a plan but i really didn't guys but no seriously i just knew she, it was something in her honestly <laughs> and just listen to her music i always found a way to put her music onto something whether it was a video yes a story, a picture something i always wanted to use her music Mm -hmm. Because it's one of our own, you know? You my dog, I'm going to support any type of way. So I'm like, you know, I know a lot of, no, I'm not going to say I know a lot of people, but a lot of people around me are, you know, doing good things. They know a lot of people, they, you know, do their own thing, you know, stay in their lane, but they, they do their own thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, can you please send me some music? Like, I done listened to the whole album about 24 times. I'm so tired of it, but I still love it. <laughs> so she was like, oh, okay. She sent me one song, y'all. Like, uh-uh. I sent you like, like three. Yeah. yeah. I, I, okay. I, I sent you like three. three. I was begging, y'all. I was begging. But she sent me some music, and I'm like, yo, dog, this is, this is crazy. Like, this is crazy. This shit sounds good. And I'm thinking, like, you know, your friends going to tell you, like, oh, this hard, this hard, this fire. And, like, because when you just good at stuff, sometimes you don't see your own, like, yeah. your own self in a different perspective. But, but yeah. yeah. But I'm like, yeah, this is crazy. And then I seen my bro, I seen my dog, you know, he had got an artist. So I'm like, okay. And I seen everything, you know, was going on on the media. And I fell asleep just listening to one song. I think it was real love. She sent me real love. And I fell asleep. Mm -mm, that, that one, like, yeah. It, it might be been real true. Or something, something like that. that. Like you just, you sent me, I don't know. It was song song. Cause, Cause Real Love was the first singing song I ever made. And that was when I got with uh, Kevin. Oh, you sent me something real. Old. Yeah. She sent me something real. Old. But it was, it was crazy. And I just fell asleep to it. And everybody got dreams. I had a, a dream. Like I saw her on stage with flashing lights. Kid you not, right hand up. Saw her on a big stage, flashing lights. And I texted like, dog. <laughs> 
I'm finna sing your music to my dog. Like, is that okay? You know? And I'm just like, I yeah. Are you looking for somebody? Like, are you looking for somebody? Because she's the one. Like, she the one. I don't know what to do, but she's the one. And, and ever since he, he heard it, he was like, dang, dog. Like, literally, the same day, like, we locked in, and he texts me. Shout out to Kevin. Kevin is my manager, guys. Uh, he's the owner of Elevator Raw, a management company, and he's also a short shooter. He be shooting videos under Elevator Kevin. But anyway, he texts me, and if you were you from where I'm from, it ain't no handouts. And you thinking, like, first of all, how he approached me, like, Yo, first of all, he approached me he like, like regular as him. Like, like now, now that, that I'm around people, people. yeah. He, he like, like, hey, yo, like I love your work. Like I want to work with you and stuff like that. And um, basically asked me did I have any representation. And I'm just like, no. And he just like, well, yeah, I got this plan. Like I want to um, basically provide you with studio time, shoot your videos, and really just build an image behind you. Mind you, before that, I had wrote in my notebook. And I had been praying to God. I was working at Little Caesars. I don't make that much money. So I prayed to God, like, God, can you please, like, put somebody in my life that believes in me and that want to invest in me? I don't have the money, but I got the talent, Father God. Like, please bless me with somebody like that. And then I seen an interview with uh, Rick Ross, and he was like, your manager should either be somebody who know the game or who has leverage. So uh, fast forward, I mean, Going back, that's rewinding. Rewinding back to uh, Kevin, he was saying all this stuff. And me, when he said that, I'm like, yeah, so, like, basically, what's the price? Like, what's the ticket? He said nothing. Everything in-house. I almost shit on myself when he said that. I was like, you know God is real, but in those moments, you be like, God, Lord, you're mighty. <laughs> yeah, and that's how I just was. And from there, like, uh, uh, that's, that's when <laughs> yeah, I'm like cat. I'm, I call cat. Like he sent me a contract and everything. She like, but yeah, this my bro. Like he ain't gonna do nothing. Wrong. I'm like, yeah, but I'm gonna have somebody look over it because I'm scared. I don't know him. This is during the pan. This is during the pandemic. One or right before, right before, right before, right right before, before the, the pandemic. pandemic. So, so okay, boom, had to look over. Okay, it was cool. Same so thing. The pandemic hit. So all of the stuff that he might wanted to do for me, he couldn't do for me because. We was already far away, but now we can't move because don't nobody know what's going on in the world. So I'm just like, damn, God, every time something happened good for me, I can't never just like go, go through. But uh, that's when we did like artist development. And I went for Million Dollar Maddie. I always knew I had to have another name to stand with the greats. Like oh, Drake feature and Million Dollar Maddie. Yeah, I, I don't really, really like that. that. Nor was I confident in that name. That was just my radio slash DJ name in uh, college. So he just like, you know, you should change. think about changing your name. He was like, what about Amari Noel? Like, you have a beautiful name. And, shit, I did. And I'm just, at first I was kind of like, no, nah, like, because you get into them modes with ego, pride. You like, no, nah, I don't really know about that. You know, that ain't me, blah, 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 like that. But then I sat and I thought, and I sat on the toilet, and I started saying Drake featuring Amari Noel. Beyonce featuring Amari Noel. And I'm just like, damn, like that sound good. Like that sound like who is that? And then I that's when I was so on it. And then he was just like, and also, you should use your singing voice more. Cause he had heard the songs. He was like, What are you recording? And I'm like, I make this on my phone. He was like, Are you fucking kidding me? And I was just like, Yeah. He was like, So you make this on your phone? I'm like, Yeah, with iPhone headphones. And he was just like, Boom, you should start singing more. And in my journal, when I was little. I know I'm have a lot of stories, but hey, that's just what it is. In my journal when I was little, it, little, it said prayer request. It said to be a singer at a young age. So in my heart, I always want to sing, but singing is scary. Like, <laughs> it's easy to go out there and be like, yo, put your hands up. And then stand up. But it's harder to be like, ah. Like, that's scarier. What, you just scared your ass? No, I'm getting a little more confident. I'm getting a little more confident, but you caught me off guard because I didn't think you was going to tell me to sing that again. Thank, thank you, man. I be trying. But, you know, like, it's easier to rap than it is to sing. Well, to me. But I tested that, and first song I made was called the song Real Love, and that's what I sent to you. He was like, I'm going to give you a test. That's what I do for all my artists. He gave me a test. I sent that back. And I was in my brother's bed, bro. I didn't have a room when I went back home for college. I didn't have a room. So I'm in my brother's bed. He at school, and 
I'm recording in front of my mom and daddy, which is something I didn't do. I would always wait till they left because I didn't even have a car at the time yet. So I would wait till they left. But I'm like, fuck it. Like, I'm finna chase my dream. Like, if this is what I got to do, this is what I got to do. And they was telling me to be quiet. Like, and I'm just, you say you need real love. Yeah. You say you need somebody down for you. And I'm just recording. I'm just like, dang, this sounds. Come on. And I know you got trust issues, so we can take it slow, ain't no rushing you. Oh, we can do it fast, guaranteed it's gonna last, cause we've been searching for the same thing, oh, that real love. Okay. Mm. Right, I'll quit, I'll quit, I'll quit, I'll quit, I'll quit, I'll quit. You, you gotta pay me, you gotta pay me, you wanna hear me sing, you gotta pay me. But yeah, I, I made the song and... I sent it. I didn't know how he was going to take it, but I know that I did it with my heart. Mm -hmm. Like, I followed my heart, and I ain't going to lie, Pen Game was on point that day. I don't know. It's something about pressure and rising to the occasion where I just like that. Like, I love to prove myself. Probably came from hooping, but yeah. And the rest was just like history. I started, like, just feeding into the process every day. Record and the pandemic happened. I'm not happy that we lost a lot of people in America. People lost their jobs and things of that nature. But I didn't have the same story with COVID. COVID kind of changed my life because I had so much downtime to, to work, work on, on something, something that was, yeah, yeah tap into my talent. And I started going every day. I'm like, three songs, three songs. I'm sending to him. I'm like, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? I'm researching. I'm watching interviews. I'm like, how they do that? How they do that? How they do that? And I'm just like this every day. Every day, I had a routine. Go sit on the rock, then go record. Every day, every day, every day. And I was tapped in. And a lot of these songs that y'all hearing today, it's suffered this one, Love Is My Religion. It's stuff that I've been recording, like, during the pandemic. I'm like that. I'm like that. I'm like that. Dying by the heart, baby. I was like, basketball ain't work out. Like, I'm going to be successful, successful at something. Love. Like, like mm. crazy. My, my true first love. Crazy. Yeah. Wow. I think about it like that. You're right. Yeah. But anybody out there, if you listening, make sure you just, like, follow your heart. And even though, like, the situation may, may not look all glitter and gold, like, when you first start, like, don't let that deter you from starting because a lot of the times, like, that's all you got to do is start. And really, God will make everything fall into place. Everybody tell me all the time, like, ask me all the time, like, how you get put on with your manager? How you do this? Nothing. I wrote down every day what I wanted, and I studied, and I made music, and I put the work in, and it just started coming because I was putting in the work, the 10,000 hours, and I'm blessed. I don't even, sometimes I don't even know, bro. I could just ask God, like, I need this, or God, I want this, and I'll leave it alone. And literally, everything come. Like, that, that should be, be scaring, scaring me. me. Scaring me we, we literally had rode on the plane, y'all. It was like, on Southwest, they give you this napkin, and it says, where you want to go? We rode down just about all of the tourist spots that we like in the US, that's, that's where we wrote. wrote. All of the tour spots that we want to go, and we also wrote overseas where we want to go. Why, when we get off the plane, they talking about, and I'm saying, I want to go to these places to perform. Cat would say what she would want to go for. Why, when we get off the plane, they talking about, yeah, Cat's Page wants you to go on tour with her. And literally, everything we wrote down, that shit was crazy. And everything on the tour. Bro. Literally. Trust your intuition and trust your power. Trust, trust God. Trust God. Yeah. 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 So, getting back to love is my religion. Right before we close it out, like how'd that song make you feel, or just like listening to it, like what was it like for you? So it was a part of the song where you said, you know, fighting these demons, trying to let the past be the past. Mm -hmm. That resonated with me a lot because you know I've been through. Shut your mouth. And when you see me, I'm always smiling. Mm -hmm. Nobody don't know I go through stuff. Or you never know I go through things. Show it. Because I don't really try to show that, that, that part of me. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to be happy. So, like, letting the past be the past is always going to be a part of who you are. But how are you going to make it better? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to move forward from that? 
So kind of moving forward and just looking at what got me to this point, it was those those obstacles. It mm. was the past, it was the, the demons I was fighting that got me to where I was. Mm. So I feel like, although I'm trying to let that past be bad, I'm still living in that past that is my future now. Mm. So. And, and I would say how you can do that is three words. Let it go. And that's hard. I ain't gonna lie. Shout out to therapy. Shout out to my therapist, Miss Cooley. She she just helped me open my eyes and realize that like the only thing you need to do is let it go. Like you have all the tools. Like you have the power to be who you want to be. You're very intelligent. You're smart. Like, like you, you know, know what you should, should be doing. doing but, but if you, you don't let this stuff go, it's gonna kill you. And, and it, it was, was killing, killing me. me. Like internally, it was killing my spirit. Like, and that's just the most important thing. Cause once your spirit is killed. Like, it's, it's over with. And I had already experienced that with basketball. In basketball, I got my spirit, like, just killed, like, murdered. And I feel like I harbor a lot of that pain in the past of that, and I bring it into, into like, these new situations when that's not the case. Like, like how you walk into a new situation with an old mindset? Say that one more time. How you walk into a new situation with an old mindset? Dang, that's, that's a, a proverb right, right there. A marverbs. That's a marverbs. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, and I feel like we fight demons every day. And a big one of the biggest demons is the past. But if you don't let the past go, like you never gonna see your future, like you said. Yeah, and sometimes living by the heart and dying by the heart is a blessing and a curse. So I would say live by the heart and die by the heart responsibly, because don't just wear your heart on the sleeve to the point where you let everybody control your emotions, like type stuff. Like you letting everybody dictate, like. I wake, wake up, up in the morning, morning and my mama might look at me wrong and that mess up my whole day. Like, girl, she probably looked at you wrong because she got something going on in her own mind. Don't take it personal. And even though it may hurt because you're like, I love my mom. Like, like I, I love, love my mom. mom. But at the end of the day, what is small shit to a giant? Like, that's small. Like, a lot of stuff we worry about in this life today, like, we shouldn't even be spending five minutes. We shouldn't even be spending a second on it. And once you just, like, really realize that and grow with yourself, I think that that's when you become just, like, a better person, you know? Yeah. And that's a part of, like, love is my religion. Like, just just that self-love because self-love is the best love. And once you just fall in love with yourself and everything, you forgive yourself for all the past shit. You forgive yourself for everything, and you learn to embrace yourself and accept yourself. Like, like the sky's the limit. Oh, she always tell me that. That is hard. It is, but if you think about it, it could be so easy. It could all be so simple. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, your car fucked up. You can't control that. And that's what I'm going But I'm going to be pissed off. Right now, that's what I'm going through. And I was mad all today. But just being around positive energy, I'm back to, you know. Yeah, because then you mad at that. You're going to be mad doing your other shit. Mess up the bag or something like that. No, just try to let go of the negative things. Mm. What you say? That's a little tip. What's, What's a small thing to a giant? I tell that to my nephews all the time. Oh, <laughs> and what you can do? Step on it! it. That's it's messed up. Are we kidding? We love animals over here, or insects. But, uh, so what's one thing before we close out you want to leave? The smartest way. Try to let the past be the past. You trying to tell me to run that song back? DJ Amari Noel. Hey, we got this fire girl, this young girl from Gary, Indiana. She's blazing the streets right now, and she got this new song called Love Is My Religion. Let's drop that. Start talking about love Love is my religion, my favorite kind of drug I didn't get a lot when I was young Gotta mess me up, but it really made me strong Fighting me steering Try to let the past be the best Friendships I built didn't last But I can't act like I ain't see that coming Wanna do whatever for you in return for nothing Probably why I'm loving all these bitches Searching for some real attention Searching for the one that I've been missing Is she out there? 
Cause for my dreams I die for And for your love I die for Are you ready, babe? That's my favorite part One thing about Amari, she gonna try to sound sexy at the end of them songs I said, are you ready, babe? Are you ready, babe? Nah, it's like, you see your girl it's, You see your girl, you finna take her down You see somebody that, you know Oh, that was cute. Tell you. <laughs> Are you ready, man? Don't, Don't sing it. Don't sing it. Are you ready, man? Are you ready, man? Are you ready, man? Yeah! <laughs> but, y'all, it's going to be plenty more, plenty more, plenty more where that came from. But right now, it's a rap. Pito, and we out.